What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the After Effect Podcast Show. I am your host, LeBron Stephan, but you can call me LBZ, LB, Big Brown, 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 B, Brown, Bronnie, the choice is yours. Welcome to episode 81. We have a very, very, very special guest, Jamil Gay is on the show today. Tampa, Florida native, played his high school football at Alonzo and Sid's High School from there. After being recruited, he chose the University of Albany to further his athletic and academic journey. He graduated from there in 2013, and I believe since then he has gotten into videography and photography, mainly I mean, videography and photography, mainly in the Tampa, Florida native uh, for big, big high school players and, and high school games and all type of sports and things of that nature. So super, super, uber excited to hear Jamiro's after effect, listen to his story. And uh, yeah, see what he's up to. So just send him a link, and once he jumps on, we will go in. A guy who came from Cleveland. Okay, well, you ain't from Cleveland, no. Cleveland was the best location in the nation. Yeah. You know, we from Cleveland, Cleveland, Ohio. Glenville community on the east side of Cleveland. Uh, Cleveland was called the best location in the nation. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, man, again, appreciate you joining, man. This is called the After Effects Show. I started it a little, a little over two years ago. It's always been my belief that, you know, all of us athletes, we all have an after effect or like an aftershock from our careers. You, you, you know you know what I mean, the wins, the losses, the, sure. the, po- the politics, the nepotism, um, you know, kind of everything that we go through. I think that a lot of times our stories aren't told. The only guys whose stories are told are the guys that make it you know, have, 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 have all these platforms and resources and they're able to start their own podcast show and networks and things like that. And I think that guys like us, a lot of times our stories are kind of lost. So this is kind of a free and safe space for us to kind of like relive that journey, talk about some good times, bad times, and really just try to push the culture forward. For sure, for sure. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and, and shout out to LJ for the assist, for the assist, putting us together, man. Right. <laughs> But so, yeah, man, first question, just kind of a current event right now. Nothing, nothing's really going on except for baseball. I really don't watch baseball. So um, we're about 28 months removed, you know, with COVID. Since we've been alive, we've never had to deal with COVID. We've never had to wear a mask. The world has never shut down. So kind of how how have you found yourself having to grow spiritually, emotionally, uh, physically, you know, during these times? I think I just read an article actually this morning where a lot of different states, the COVID numbers are rising again. So even if we vaccinated, we still wear a mask. This is kind of just like a way of, a way of life now. So how have you find yourself after growing up over the last 28 months? Well, really, uh, life life changed, you know, for everybody. You know, um, for me personally, started working from home, which uh, honestly gave me a lot more time to do a lot of different things and made me be more disciplined. Um, I would say, like, physically, um, trying to trying to stay, trying to stay at it, you know. Trying right. to stay, trying to stay like how you were back when you know you had your prom, but exactly it's tough. But you know, just trying to keep it all, keep it all, keep it all, you know, in line together. Yeah. But um, emotionally, I would say like recently I just had a son, so that's okay. just taking Congra- over. Congrats taking on that, bro. Yeah, appreciate that. But um, that's taking over that. So just just living through that, uh, being a dad, and um, you know, trying to instill some of the things that like I've learned and people have taught me into him, you know, positive things. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, exactly. I, I can attest to that, man. Um, uh, it's been ways for me with the physical part because, because you know, I'm, I'm retired. I haven't played since 2016. So, like you say, I had a, had a 19 relationship, 19 year relationship with football. I'm not sure how long, how many years you played, but it's like when that's over, you have to kind of like reinvent yourself and find find a new motivation to right. hit to hit the gym and train as hard as you used to, and then you know know when to kind of like dial it back and dial it up, like it's you don't have that football motivation anymore. You're not putting on the helmet anymore, right? So you got to find a different motivation than that. And that in itself is is, is tough. <laughs> and they tell you, tell you, like, when you're working out and stuff like that, they say, like, um, you know, 
like when you're done playing, you know, it, it ain't going to be the same. It's not going to be the same intensity. It's not, you're not going to have somebody yelling at you and exactly you know, <laughs> there, like everybody trying to hit goals and stuff like that. It's not exactly. the same. Um, you still got to find a way to get it, you know? Exactly. Sure. Yeah. Find yeah, yeah, definitely. And then, like you said, um, I don't have any kids yet, but, you know, adding that, adding that being a dad factor into it, obviously that's like number one, everything goes to secondary. So it's like, um, I, I know that it's hard to balance, man. So I, I can, I, I can definitely attest. Um, <laughs> Yeah, man. So I saw you was born in 92. I was born in 89, man. So just paint me a picture on what it was like growing up in the 90s in Tampa. I always feel old when I say this, uh, but, you know, we just didn't grow up like the kids now. We didn't have YouTube. We didn't have cell phones. We didn't have Roblox. We didn't have video cameras. We didn't even have the Internet. I think the Internet came out in 98, 99. And, you know, you had to have money to to, to even afford a PC with the, dial, with the dial of Internet. I think I didn't we didn't get a We didn't get a computer until probably like. 2003 or four, I was already in like the ninth, 10th grade, man. So I only had computer access at school. So it's just, you know, it's just a different time. We know there was no social media. Um, so just kind of like paint me a picture of what it was like growing up in the South. Obviously, I know that it was super hot in Florida, uh, but kind of like what was the culture down there in the nineties? So really, uh, I grew up in Indiana. I grew up in okay. Indiana. So, uh, but um, I would visit the South, like, cause my dad stayed down here. So I visited the South in the summers. Um, obviously hot um but really was growing up in the midwest so it was really okay. basketball for me basketball and uh, I, I i love football you know i was good i played defense and i was always you know people would be saying like i was hitting hard and all kind of stuff but i was okay. basketball because my okay you started playing back you started hooping before football uh basically because my whole family was just big big on basketball like and okay. in the end like just big basketball but um yeah. And I, I had a passion for football and I was always good at football. So it's like one of them things. Like, so when I'll go down south and I, you know, big football, mm -hmm. you know, state, it'd be like I fit in kind of thing. So it was it right. had, that a lot. But um, okay. Growing up, uh, like I said, once I moved down here when I was in sixth grade. So I would say like once uh, middle school and high school, that's when I really started really getting into heavy and stuff. Yeah. Okay. So. so did you like play both all the way up to like, like 12th grade or did you stop playing basketball at some point? So I um I played I played basically up to eleventh grade. I played okay. with uh, John Henson, you know. Okay. Yeah. And he not him, but basically he had took our team to like you know to, uh, tournament here, tournament there, you know, kind yeah. of thing. State so, semis stuff like that. Went to the we didn't go to states. We should have. Okay. Went. But okay. uh, <laughs> basically, uh, we went to this tournament. Um, I want to say in Fort Myers, and I got to see like Austin Rivers, Brandon Knight, yeah, John Wall, everybody. You know, kind of. Okay. Been, it made That's me dope. realize. It made me realize. You know, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, not I'm not. I'm not heaven hoping. Right, 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 right. So I'm like, at that point, I got to get on this football grind. So yeah, yeah. You know, I'm like, man, I got to hit the ways, hit the field, all that. That's that's when it really, you know, that realization came for me. I'm like, I gotta, I gotta. If I want to play at the next level, I gotta get it on my phone. Right. No, 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 no. That's real, man. Because I started playing football at eight, and I started hooping at nine, and I played, I just, I played both sports all the way up to 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 mm -hmm. twelfth grade. But um, probably like ninth grade is when I realized like okay, football is going to be like my main thing. I can still have this love for basketball because my name is LeBron. And I found out about LeBron James when I was 10 years old. When, when he, he was a freshman at St. Vincent St. Mary, 14, with the nappy fro, giving God 25, 14. they like, he's going to be the best in the, in the country and all this. So obviously I had hoop jays because we had the same name. So I'm like, man, I'm going to be the second LeBron. <laughs> but when I, when I got to the ninth grade four years later, I started varsity in football as a 14-year-old. And then I started JV in basketball and like just all the varsity games. So when I started all the all the letters, once I started getting all the letters and recruiting from football, I'm like, okay, football gonna be my thing. But I still love to hoop. I still hoop to this day. Um, yeah, so I get it. It's like it's like once you find your window, whichever one it is, you gotta you know you gotta kind of go with that. You gotta take it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, what would you what would you say? Like I always say for any elite athletes, everybody got a different time. But we all have a light switch to kind of hit on. Like you start noticing that you're faster than everybody, you're stronger than everybody, you're making a lot more plays than everybody. Um, I, I've had guys tell me that was eighth grade for them. For me, it was like it was tenth grade. After I got my feet wet in ninth grade and ha had my little lumps and made my mistakes, and then came back my tenth grade year, like made all conference and, and all district and all that, and I started like getting scholarship offers. That's when it, it, the light switch hit on. Like, damn, like, I could really probably play Division One college football. Like, like it really kind of hit me. So, like, when would you say that time kind of hit you where it was like, 
oh no, like I could really probably go do this. So I would say probably my junior year. Um, okay. I ended up. Uh, I had a, I had an okay junior year. You know, our team okay. wasn't wasn't that good, but I had an okay junior year. Like led the team in receiving, but like I said, it wasn't nothing special. Yeah. Um, I ended up transferring. And once I transferred, they made like a big fuss about it on some like I was like, you know, oh yeah, I saw you started at Alonzo, then you, so you transferred to Sids. No, I, I went to Sickles, but I transferred to Alonzo. Okay, 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 okay. But when I was at Sickles, like I said, I was just whatever. But then when I went to Alonzo, they made like a big fuss, like on some like, like nah, this kid, like you know, I man, I'm like, like I was like, like one of them dudes. So I'm like, okay, yeah. so I got to Alonzo. <laughs> Um, you know, we went to tournament at UCF, tournament at USF, and then once I got into front of some people, I got like my first offer. And then at that point, that's when I'm like, you know, once you get that first offer, you're like, okay, yeah. I'm you know, <laughs> you know, right, right. Like, it's kind of like you really just trying to just obviously get more, but yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I remember man, I got my, my first offer was uh, from Indiana, it was like in the spring of my 10th grade year, like going into my 11th grade. Uh, mm -hmm. No, no, no. It was it wasn't Big Ten. It was it may have been Ball State, actually, uh Max School. But yeah, like you said, like when you when you get that first one, obviously it's surreal. But then you just want to press and like, you know, see how many you can get. Like, you know, you want to win your right, options. Right, so right, right. It's like, oh, I want I got this one. I want them. You know? Right, right, right. And then it's like a trickle down. Like once school see the this school offer, that's when they come and all, you know. Yeah, it's like a it's it's, it's they get uh, more eyes on you, you know, they get more eyes out there for sure. Yeah, 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 for sure, man. So uh talk recruiting, like if you can remember, like who is your who were your kind of like top three? Did you yeah, take, did you take had visits? Three. I only had three. Well, they were okay. So <laughs> I had I had Towson, I got Towson first. Okay. I got that off of the strength of shout out to my quarterback. Um back at time that time, he's a quarterback coach now, but uh he basically was linked up with the Towson quarterback coach, and you know, I'll go run routes for him, do this for him, do that for him. And, uh, you know, he would, he got me that first offer, but the uh, okay. was one, South Dakota was another one and then Albany. So, okay. um, but ended up visiting, you know, South, South Dakota and Albany. And it was just like night and day really. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I know South Dakota is like in the middle of nowhere, but essentially yeah. right. it is. But it's, it's not a, a lot of people that look like you out there. Yeah. No, it's a big football school, though. So that's what it was like. Yeah. Playing, yeah. But it was just that's like, what I heard. Because that's where um, Carson Wentz went. Right. Or they've had some North Dakota State. North OK, 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 OK. Uh, South Dakota, they like not rivals, but you know how it could get like yeah. over there. But, um, yeah. Yeah. you know, they had a dome. They had all kind of stuff that was like appealing for sure. Yeah, it's the lifestyle. Like we had to fly into Omaha, drive all the way to South Dakota. Right, right, right. Albany was like you driving ten minutes to the from the airport to the. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So that's why you went. Ultimately, that's why you went with Albany. Right. Yeah. Okay. Like, just like city lifestyle. It was just more city, city, city kind of. Yeah. Thing. So it was like ten minutes from New York for NYC. No, no, ten minutes from the airport, but it was probably like three hours from. Okay, uh, okay. So is Albany like by like Syracuse or or on a different part? Upstate. So upstate. Okay. Right? Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Because I was looking like, and I was like, I know that the weather was probably a crazy transition for me because you, yeah. well, no, but you grew up in Indiana, so and, and Indiana had those Midwest winters, but that New York winter is different. <laughs> yeah, but, but then being from Florida, like so from being from Florida from middle school to whatever. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. You forgot about the winters. <laughs> yeah, in Albany and like the winds, the wind is is just crazy up there. Yeah. You know? And then yeah. obviously having to play, playing receiver, trying to catch, yeah, man. used to running in that stuff. And I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Yeah, I, I know that was tough. So, yeah. um, yeah, that's a perfect segue. Kind of talk about your transition from, um, from you know, your high school in Tampa, Florida, to um, your time at University of Albany. I saw, you know, your freshman year, you had 25 catches for 401 yards. So it was like, it seemed like your transition was fairly easy. And I always like talking about this because, I feel like this always gets lost in translation from fans or whoever's just lovers of football. Like it's hard. Like people forget that how hard it is. Like you go, you go from like your comfort zone, you know, wherever you're, wherever, whatever city you're from, you're living with your family, all that. And depending on like what area you're from, like I'm from Cleveland and I, I always went to public schooling. So like I could probably count on one hand, how many white people I ever really even had to like interact with other yeah. than, basketball football we playing we playing this high school or this high school like you know like on a court or, or on the gridiron but that transition from Cleveland to Iowa City was was hard for me because it's like I'd never been in a class with 200 white people and it's like two black people and everybody know you because it's a football school but you're still trying to have like a social life and just be normal at the same time 
Um, I'm sure Albany was probably was a P. I think Albany is a PWI too, right? A predominantly white institution. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. So, like, how was your transition from from high school to that? So, really, um, socially wise, it wasn't too bad because uh, once you get on campus, you know, you get there a little bit earlier, so you make right. you link with the football players, and at that point, you're really cool, and you can just kind of branch off as you do. Right. But um, like Tampa is kind of like mixy as well so okay know, tampa is diverse yeah it's very oh, okay 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 yeah, so, so you was, already you already was used to, you had some diversity in high school yeah yeah so it was okay really far. It, it was it was different getting used to like their culture like that up north culture for sure but um like obviously being there for five years you just kind of adapt but you still keep of that you know, keep yeah the, yeah the um, stuff. But, um, yeah yeah oh yeah you definitely man i, I um and we're like, what what was kind of like the New York culture? Like, what could you say was the difference from Florida culture, New York culture? I know like New York culture, like guys like really are into like dressing or like, like uh, you know, like we're, we're wearing like nice shoes or, or, or you know, the, it's always cold up there. So guys always feel like they, you know, they're trying to get fresh. Was it kind of like, what was definitely, the New York culture? Definitely people getting fly. It's like okay. you know, the fly people. Then you got the people like the jer- people that come from Jersey that come to the school, you know, yeah. so they got people from the city to come to the school, people from Jersey to come to the school, people from Syracuse. So yeah. it's like, it's definitely one of the bigger schools in New York, but it's one of the ones that like, like I said, people will come to that, you know, I said, I'm trying to get away from the city. So it's like a, okay. so, so but, okay. uh, definitely, uh, I would say like like getting flies one of the was one of the one of the biggest. Like, like, <laughs> like, so like, when I, when I, like my freshman year would be more of like like the jersey stuff, just because it was just younger and like that would be yeah. I'd say like the I say the environment. But as you got older, you would just get more into like like I said, the more urban stuff. You yeah, know? yeah, 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 like, yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. Like, like, okay. Like, okay. Type of cruises and stuff like that. And you know, okay. Did you, you have like, to get used to the lingo at all? Like, like nah, I me, mean, B. Uh, uh for sure. Nah, what you saying, B? <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. All that kind of stuff. People talking about okay. this brick outside. First time we get, we get super yeah, cold. Yeah, about, yeah. I'm right. talking about <laughs> just that kind of. But I'm coming up there saying jit and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, that Florida lingo. Right. right, right. So, but it, but it, it, it is, it's funny, man. It's, and that's all it's like. It's all love. You know? Right, right, right. I, and, and that's what I love about just sports in general, especially college sports, right? Because you're mixing different people from different cultures. Everybody talk different. And at Bosco, we had guys from we had a lot of guys from Florida, Texas, uh, I like small towns in Iowa, Ohio, New York. Albany. Say so, again. Yeah. Was a dude from Albany, a running back. Uh, he was yeah. a freshman, number thirty-three. Thirty-three. Oh, um, um, is that Jordan Kaziri? Yeah, he's from Albany. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That that's my dude, man. I, I had him on here. Um. I think he was like episode 30 something, but yeah, that's my dude. I got his number. Like we uh we connected. For, for some reason they thought he was gonna come to all of me, but you know, oh, like, for real. <laughs> I think like, I remember right. him telling me about recruiting, and yeah, I think he, I think Iowa came on um like like late. They offered him late, and obviously, you know, he he went with the big ten choice, but yeah, he played early and he had a he, he actually had a great career. He had a great career, yeah. Iowa. Yeah, that's dope, man. Small world, small world. Um, so yeah, man, 66 catches, 849 yards total. Um, what would you say? What, what what kind of moments that like, kind of stood out to you um, during your career? And also, just transparently speaking, uh, were you, when you graduated, were you happy with your career? Did you feel like you could have done more? Like, let's talk about that a little bit. So I would say, like, when I first started, I started as a freshman, which was, like, something I would say, like, something I, I definitely liked. But yeah. then, like, looking back, I was like, I wish, like, somebody could have, like, I wish I would have had somebody like, hey, man, you might want to research just to, yeah or and get more time and just like you know just get grounded more you know yeah yeah get used to the playbook put put a couple uh ass of muscle get used to how the program and the system is ran yeah i think it like the playbook i tried to learn the playbook early when i got there and that's why i ended up playing but um so i had a good freshman year i ended up like messing up my hamstring my sophomore year and i tried i wanted to register then trying to like you know but the coaches wasn't going for that um yeah junior year like was okay like you know we but like during the time what i learned was like even if like i wasn't happy being like you know 700 yards a thousand yards whatever mm-hmm. we were championships conference championships and like that was enough for me and right like, right of course ships we was making and um that kind of stuff but i ended up getting like two conference rings out of it uh nice. my junior and sophomore year nice 
senior year, we moved up to the CAA. So that's when we playing like um, James Madison. Bill okay. Nicola, um, Bill, okay. Like bigger competition at this point. So yeah. Um, yeah. But then I moved back into the slot, and at this point, I had a, like another good season. Um, to my like thing, I was happy with it, you know. But right. uh, you you always you know wish you could do more. You know? Of course, yeah. Just that that, that yeah. athlete mindset, that competitive mindset. Like you always think you could do more. You think about plays you missed, plays you could make. Yeah. Right, 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 right. I remember, man. The funny one of the funniest story, like me and my homeboy, we was like, obviously, you know, that night before the game, you're in the hotel and all that yeah. kind of stuff. <laughs> nowhere. So we just chilling, watching, watching whatever game was on TV. Right. And uh, I'm like, man, I don't drop passes. I don't drop passes. I'm hollering. I don't drop. <laughs> my boy, my boy, he's like, man, you better watch out because you're going to drop something. Well, I'm like, I, he's like, I don't want to wish nothing bad on you, but you better watch out. Tomorrow. Right, right, right. <laughs> So like I like I felt like I was a receiver that like I knew what plays were coming to me. Mm-hmm. One time I'm running a go route, thinking I'm just running a dude off, and that boy quarterback launched that thing. I'm running, I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> it was one of them ones where you gotta like you know track it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was out of bounds, but I still should have caught it. You know, could have got some feet in and stuff. But like, okay, okay. It was one of them ones I was like, <laughs> tighten up, man. Oh yeah, yeah. So you were sick. Like, yeah, but it was like, yeah, it was funny. You know, like. Just yeah. like um, it's one of like funny stories, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's funny you talk about uh, like the night before the hotel. I used to always uh, a roommate with the same guy, Mike Daniels, and it's funny like we still real close friends to this day. But we we had like complete different professional careers. Like he got drafted in the fourth round NFL, and he's still in the league now, ten years later. Like <laughs> dude, dude, dude made like sixty million dollars. Like. He got six kids. <laughs> so we all, I actually just talked to him last week. We always be on the phone laughing, just talking, remembering those Friday nights because we used to always, like, we used to work out before the team dinner. So we used to get in and usually have, like, an hour, you know, before team dinner. So we used to have our rubber bands and our uh, our uh, our hand grips. We used to do the hand grips, curls, and push-ups, and <laughs> triceps, and just get all swole because, you know, we played D-line, uh, then go eat. So, uh, yeah, it's funny, man. Those Friday nights, it's funny you brought, brought that up because those Friday nights. I think that's when you become kind of like, obviously training camp too, but whoever you room with, you are you are usually typically have a real close relationship with, man. And a lot of, you know, fans or people that love football don't really know what that bond is like, man. So, yeah. Yeah, man, it's crazy, man. Because like I said, they, they still be like, you know, your best friends to this day, you know? Of course, of course. And it don't matter. And it's really more, it's more than football, whatever sports you play. Like, it's, it's bigger than that. Yeah, right. the, the relationship. Right. Yeah, man, definitely. So um, so talk about, like, after you graduated in 2013, did you want to play any type of professional football? Because I know a lot of guys, like, sometimes they don't want to go, like, the indoor or arena route or CFL. So did you want to play football professionally anywhere, or you just kind of knew, like, after you got done with college ball, like, you was going to transition to the next phase of your life? So I didn't really – obviously, I, didn't, I for some reason, I didn't think I could play at the next, next level. But – um. When I came back home, that same quarterback coach that got me that Towson offer, mm. I was just basically like uh, running routes for somebody. Um, and he had seen me, he's like, man, you still got some juice left in you. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> so um, he was like, you know, I can get your child with uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning. I mean, the Storm, I'm sorry, Tampa Bay okay. Storm. And, um, and I was like, you know, a yeah, bet. But then at that time, like, I really wasn't in good shape. I was just obviously just... You know, yeah, just, you're still athletic, and you know, yeah, I mean, yeah, you have been doing uh, it, but not in like playing shape, like you can right, run right, right. 10 to yeah, 12 right, routes, right? Right, 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 right. Yeah. But I wasn't in like shape to be playing, and then like you know, just really at that point, my love was basketball, so I just got into like recreational hooping, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, and then also, I feel like now it's like not saying I played at the highest level, but like anything now, football wise, like it's just kind of different because right. You play- that level you know exactly so, exactly not saying playing flag ain't the same but it's just it's just yeah know. yeah i mean yeah i i played flag a couple times uh, over the years but um it definitely ain't the same but like for me you know i i chased a dream for a while like i played arena uh right fresh out of high school i mean fresh out of college just trying to like get some film uh because my uh my, my agent at the time was telling me like the NFL teams, like you know that they, 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 they like my college tape, but they wanted they thought that I maybe I should go play arena and get some new tape. Um, mm-hmm. so I did that, and then I like moved to Atlanta and I did the CFL circuit. So like, because a lot of the CFL teams would come through Atlanta, 
uh, for try for tryout. So I did that for two years, 14, 15, pretty much tried out for almost every CFL team you can think of. And they, and they all gave me the same run around. Uh, you in great shape. We lay a tape. Stay ready. Same mm-hmm. old. Get your passport. <laughs> we, can <call> it, <laughs> we can call it anytime. Same BS. Did yeah. that for two years, bro. And I was just working, you know, just working in Atlanta and, and staying in shape, working out, doing that, doing trials. Nothing happened. But then I went and played arena again in 2016 for the Barnstormers. Uh, had a pretty good season. And at that point, I was 27. And I actually got a, got a, got a, like a big time agent. My dude that I was just talking about, Mike Daniels, he got me his agent from Sports Stars. Sports Stars, which is in NYC. They have like all NFL, NBA guys. He got me his agent to shop like that tape run, 2016. And that's when they kind of hit me with the age thing. Like, man, you balling, but you 27. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, 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 we like you. Hey, come on, yeah, man. like, we like you, but we can get that from this 21-year-old over here. And then by the time he's 27, he's probably going to be a lot better than you. So that's when that so that's when they like finally hit me like, all right, it's, it's over with. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. like it's over with. I, I did what I could do. Um, so like, if you can remember, like, do you remember like kind of like the day or kind of like the transition, like kind of like when you knew that you wasn't gonna play football no more? Was it like a day or was it like a transition? Did you ever really even put any thought into it, like about thinking that like, okay, no, you're not gonna play. Like, did you want to coach? Did you want to? maybe try to look for a job like that you got that you majored in, which is sociology, like, like kind of what was your process and kind of finding after, after. your way? Yeah. Yeah. So basically when I came back, like it was just tough. Obviously it's real tough. Like, yeah, man. For everybody. I think uh, like yes. real, you know, but um, came back and was like, just trying to find a job instantly. And then I didn't care what it was. Right. Just, just putting out applications, trying to get, trying to buy something. Got, got bills to pay. Same here, bro. <laughs> and dishes but then like i couldn't do that so then i ended up like doing like child care services and then mm-hmm. like that's what i ended up like like getting into like social services but um yeah and ended up going into that kind of route but once i started getting around the kids it's like you know i still want to do sports stuff because i love sports so right did try to get into coaching a little bit but it was like i realized i don't I'm not saying i don't have enough time for that but it's real time yeah right like, heavy it. heavily time consumers yeah, on, on, on any level, on, on any right. level. Yeah, right, right, right. So, and um, I, I didn't want to like do it like just like be like pump faking with it or be one foot in half. Well, like, you know right, I mean? right, right. One foot in, one foot out. Yeah. So that's what um, just really didn't do the coaching. So I really stepped away from it for like a, a, a hot minute, hot okay. minute. Um, you know, just would keep my eye on it, whatever. Mm-hmm. But um, my little cousin, he's growing up and uh, he was a sophomore last year and I heard he was on varsity. So I'm like, what? I'm like, I ain't even playing on varsity. Yeah, yeah, as a sophomore, yeah. <laughs> got going on. So I went out to see him one game. And uh, like I said, just was out there. And I'm like, dang, like, oh, what I was doing was um, every, like, on some weird stuff, every, like, now and then I would see some stuff, like, be that person you would want to be when you were a teenager kind of thing. So I'm like, yeah. I'm thinking about that just over and over. And when I'm going to, when I went to see him play, I'm like, yo, every, after every game, I'm looking for the highlight tape, the pictures, whatever I had done, you know, that night. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kind of so I'm like, man, this next game, I'm going to try to get a camera, come out here. And like, my stepmom's like, I got a camera so you can use that. Yeah. Uh, went out there for the next game and it was a big game, like a rivalry game. And I'm just out there with the camera first day. And like, it was real, like purposeful for me, at least. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, going out to the club or doing something like that, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. Sure. Like, it felt like the stars was aligning in a way. Yeah. Okay. yeah. You know, like, I talked to the administrator. They got me on the field. So, like, I was just, like, on some, like, official, but well, not official, because, like, I was just on some, just picked up the camera. So, right. um, down on the field, took the pictures, and, like I said, took pictures of both sides. And, like, after the game, the kids was like, what is, where the pictures going to be at? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> right, I, I, I'm going right. to get you right. So, after that, it just like you said, everything just started aligning. and made the little Instagram, um, made the website. Yeah. Finally, I went through the trials and tribulations of that ups and downs. Um, yeah, like, figuring that, navigating through that, and trying to figure out how to. Yeah, yeah. Right, and then like I said, I started with just pictures, and uh, one one time I'm at a game, and this little jit, I'll never forget it. He 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 told me look at his Instagram, told me how far he was, and he was like, "You do videos?" I'm like, "Nah." 
<laughs> and he was like, he was like, ah. I'm like, oh, I'm like, I got to do yeah, So that's what you do. Right, and, and, and it's crazy. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what year you started that, but now, like with the NIL deals and just how high school football is now, it wasn't like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, Never. like we used to have like, like the, like the huddle uh, website and, and they used to only go, they used to only go to like big games. So like, you may right. be able to find some photos from a big game, you know what I mean? But now, like with social media and these guys want to be the, the top this and top that. They want the videos for the marketing. They want the photos for the marketing. And, right. and these guys getting NIL deals in high school and leveraging those deals to college NIL deals. So what you do now is so vital, plays a, like a pivotal role in these guys, like recruiting and all that kind of stuff now. So it's crazy that you kind of found that like years ago and that it wasn't planned. It just, it happened. It found, it found you, basically. Man, I found this last October or September. Like, wow, yeah. I just, I, I ain't even like a whole year in yet, but like, it's like, it, it basically evolved. Like I said, my mom had gave me that camera and then like I had uh, shot a whole little football, like the end of the football season. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then my best friend, uh, he's a coach of basketball. He's like, yo, I want you to shoot with my basketball team. So I, I shot a few games for the basketball team. And then like, I'm so like into it now that I'm like, man, I got to upgrade my camera, man. I want right. to really get to the next level. Right. I ended up like renting a camera one time and shot with that camera. And like, it was like, it was so crazy how it looked different. Right, like, night and day. I <laughs> felt with the camera. So I'm like, bro, I can't go back to, I right. can't go back right. to the next game. I'm like, I, I bought the camera, got the lens, I got the same package I had got. And then from there, like I said, everything just started going up. So now, you know, doing more, better video content, better yeah. pictures and all that stuff. Man, I, I watched your video content though. And your pictures, bro, it looks like you've been doing it for a long time. You talking about you ain't even been doing it a year. Right. Like I'm talking about I like the one video that I love is where where you got the one guy mic'd up. He like a receiver or something like that. You got him mic'd up, he running routes, he like in the seven on seven. And it's like mm-hmm. a lot, and I've seen I see a lot of videographers when they first get started, they don't understand that audio component. Like that audio is so important. Like you can love what you see, but if if, if an audience can't hear what's the what's uh, really going on, that's what set it off the audio. So I was like, wow, this dude, I'm like, this guy. I started thinking in my head, like, man, I might need to come to Florida and and and, and, and give me a work and, and give me a workout in and, and get some content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but that's crazy that you you, you kind of just found that, man. And it's crazy kind of how that happens, bro. Like how things just kind of find you. And that's what I that's what I love. It's not. Like when you're not when you're not out there like just doing too much searching for something and instead just kind of let it find you, let it kind of let it come to you. For sure, for sure, man. And yeah. like uh, like I said, now I'm trying to obviously just elevate. So I started doing more like um trying to do like more cinematic photo shoots. So like imagine like if you were a linebacker, I got you in the linebacker stance and right like real like real cinematic, cinematic stuff. Shoots. Yeah, so trying to like and. Yeah, that kind of stuff. So and so I'm glad I got your number, man. A good buddy of mine. I'm not sure if you're into wrestling, uh, uh, is but Big E. I mean, he he's going through a he broke his neck, um, um, in a in a um wrestling tournament a couple months ago. So he's still like rehabbing, but he's from Tampa. He lives in Tampa. He was mm-hmm. a WWE champion, um, from like November to January of mm-hmm. last year. And I I just had him on the show a couple a couple months ago. He's a, he's the homie. He played football at Iowa. Um, but I would love to like just get y'all on a group chat because he's always doing obviously WWE pays for a lot of his content and, and stuff like that, but he's still he's like the strongest guy probably you will ever see in the weight room. Like this dude, yeah. this dude bits 600, 550, repping, yeah. repping it out, like squatting six, seven hundred, crazy. But he's always doing like workouts. His aesthetic is crazy, like 300 pounds, like hardly no body fat. So I would love to kind of maybe hook you up with him. Y'all in the same city. And see if y'all can, you know what I'm saying, just kind of like do some kind of content, man. But, um, and, you know, and because I think that'd be great, like for your brand, as you're trying to like kind of expand and get better. So, yeah, I, I'll definitely put y'all in a group chat, man. Um, but so, yeah, man, we got just got a couple, two more things. You already talked about like your career path, how you want to expand. Uh, do you see yourself just kind of sticking to like football, basketball? Are you open to any other sports, things like that? Definitely. Uh, I mean, I'm, a, I, I'm, open to all sports, obviously. Um, I shot like a lacrosse one time at a lacrosse tournament and uh, really like that. Uh, okay, I know that was different. <laughs> yeah, different, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's totally different following yeah. that. Uh, 
Love basketball, love football. Never did soccer, but you know, obviously can, okay. can, can do it all, obviously, you know. Right, right, right. Um, but also trying to do like more like, like I said, just straight photo shoots. So I got like some senior shoots books, so uh stuff like that as well, you know. So yeah, putting the that. That's fire, man. Yeah, keep 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 going, man. I, I, I love it, bro. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so just one more thing. What would you say is Jamil Gay's after effect of his entire athletic journey, right? What were some lessons that you learned, you know, from when you first started playing to the end of college that you took and kind of like you carry now, like, you know, with your photography business, like being a dad, kind of just as we try to push the culture forward? I would just say, like, um, really just trying to be consistent, you know, consistent, um, yeah. just because, like, uh, you know, just building, you know, that's just the main thing, consistent. Um uh, during my like coaching, not my coaching time, but time playing in Albany, we had one of the uh, like oldest coaches like of all okay. time. Ford, uh, he he taught us so many lessons. It was like just like every practice, every time you're doing something, he got a like a a, a saying. Speech, yeah, 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 same, yeah. And uh, one of his one of his like uh, like things he was known for saying like leaving something like better than you like found it kind of thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's like one thing I always try to do as well, but uh, really just staying consistent, man, and trying to, you know, be the best man I can, you know. Of course. You know, it's funny that you mentioned saying, I love I love that after effect, by the way, but uh, my college coach, Kirk Ferris, he's like the longest tenured uh, college coach in, in, in the entire CFB right now. Like he's been at Iowa since 98 or something like that. So it's been almost 30 years. Uh but he used to always say, and I, I still kind of operate with, with it now. It's like when you're, and it's just basic. Like when you're on time, you're late. And when you're early, you're on time. So that kind of just taught me where, wherever I need to go, where it's work or meeting, audition, a gig, whatever, yeah. podcast, I'm, I'm early. Like I'm hardly ever like just getting there when I'm just supposed to be there. I'm always super early. I got my water. I'm getting myself together, whatever we going to do. Like, um, so that kind of just live with me and stay with me and, that's what I love about sports, right? You learn so many things that are um, about football, but it's it's life related. It's it's tra it's it's right. transactional. Like you can, you can transaction and move it to you know to to your life, uh, your core core aspect. So yeah, for sure, it definitely is like you know relatable in like all aspects. Just because, um, like you said, you got to be able to work as a team and really yeah. like. After laughter, it's like like it's the same same stuff, you know. Like exactly, <laughs> I got a team with like the people that I, I do my you know work with now, not the photography stuff. But the work with now, I got to work as a team. I gotta you know hit deadlines, meet goals, you know, hit performance rates, all that kind of stuff is like stuff that right. you do sports stuff. But now you just gotta hone that energy in a whole different like. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And, and and as I get older, man, that, that's what I love about. Just sports in general, man. It teaches you so many things. And I think that nothing against people that don't play sports or don't have that kind of like athletic acumen. But I just feel like it kind of puts us on a different playing field when you go into the real world and you have these jobs or or or, or you got your you got your own like entrepreneurial thing going. Um, that level of competitiveness and consistency and determination and accountability that you learn from football, you once you have that and kind of put that into your life force as an adult like and knowing that you're not gonna stop you're not gonna quit you fall down nine times you're gonna get up 10 if you if you experience some kind of adversity you're gonna you're gonna work through it because you've right. done that already so many times in football it's like you see a lot of people that didn't that don't have that sports experience kind of giving up or saying effort and going going right. another route or they don't have that they don't have that mindset that that mental toughness to right. to, to keep going <laughs> to, to stay in it you know what i mean and that's one thing i'm 33 but that's one thing i've learned in my in my past ten years post college is that I'm you we we just wired different we wired a little different you know what I mean and and it definitely kind of gives you an edge like when you're talking about like like life goals and your yearly goals monthly goals whatever whatever you're trying to do so for sure yeah yeah definitely well yeah bro that's all I had man I know I just missed you I know we just kind of kind of link it but one thing I try to do in my show is uh give guys flowers bro so everything you did at, at University of Albany man everything you're doing now. Finding, finding your passion, let, kind of letting it come to you. I don't think we get, we show love as black men enough. So I just want to salute you until you keep going, man. I just want to kind of want to give you those flowers while we both still here, bro. So appreciate that, brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So yeah, man, we'll be in touch. I got your number. Um, I'll definitely 
I know Biggie is still kind of like healing, but once he kind of keep get going, I'll put y'all in the group chat. See which, see if y'all can put something together in Tampa, man. And we'll stay in contact, bro. All right, brother. All right, man. Yes, nice sir. And uh, thank you for the opportunity, bro. Yes, sir, man. Take it easy, man. Salute, y'all. Stay safe. Yep. All right. So yeah, guys. Um, I thought that was a very powerful episode eighty one with Jamil Gay. Um, playing at University of Albany, ha having a ha having a really good career there as a receiver. Um, and then kind of transitioning into a little bit of coaching and social services work um, during his young 20s. And then now, and then now uh, finding his love for photography and videography and killing it on the high school scene in Tampa, Florida. Um, super, super excited to see, you know, uh, his business continue to elevate. If you watch this entire episode on YouTube, please subscribe. Please leave us a comment if you have a question. If you listen to it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, please rate us, please leave us a review. As you know, listenership is one of the ways that we make money. Merch, merch, merch. I'm not sure if you can tell, but I got one of the snapbacks somewhere right now. Black and white, you know, the After Effects show. Uh, so we got the hats in. Um, we the shirts will be in next week. And we got we ordered, we got magnets, uh, you know, for your refrigerators. We got stickers for, for your laptops. Those will be in next week too. We also got personal packaging. I'm really just just trying to create an experience, right? Uh, if, if you've been on the show, if you've watched or listened for over the past few years, just really trying to create an experience. So our packaging will be in next week. And then, you know, we'll create, we'll, once everything is in, we'll create our Shopify store and allow our listeners and our viewers and our supporters to, you know, order merch. Um, so yeah, hopefully you just, you've just been rocking with us and, and we'll continue to. And so until the next time, peace. Subscribe to LeBron Daniel TV, but you already knew that where we dig deep and find our hustle and every single day we are better than yesterday. Subscribe.